Assalamu alaikum, my dear brothers and sisters. Inshallah, we continue today with the second half of Surah Al Ghashiyah. Bismillah, alhamdulillah. So, about the, you know, the punishment that he has prepared for those who do not believe and different kinds of punishment, food and drink that they will be having in the hellfire. And Allah then tells us about the opposite side. And the pleasure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared for those who believe in Him, all kinds of pleasures in Jannah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that we need to know that there is a creator, that we need to reflect, right? So don't think that this is just some kind of warning and some kind of, um, you know, glad tidings about some pleasure. But no, you need to know that there is a creator that if you reflect, you'll be able to reach that creator on your own, to know to be of those from the second type here, who are the people that will be in Jannah, enjoying all these amazing rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah calls us to reflect. One of the greatest acts of worship is to reflect on the creation of Allah. As I said in some of my khutbas that, um, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, the cousin of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said that reflecting one hour is better than qiyamul layl for the entire night. So if you're watching documentary, if you're outdoors, if you reflect on nature, you're actually, uh, and the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're actually performing an amazing act of worship. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to reflect on al-ibil, which is camels, one of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that was available to the Arabs who refuse to believe, and also it is available for us today. And it's not just available for us to reflect on, on its creation, but also on its benefits. There's a lot of research that has been done on the benefits of the uh, the milk of the uh, of the of the camels, and even the urine. The Prophet sallallahu told uh, told some people, and this is Mr. Sahih Bukhari and. Uh, Sahih Muslim, people who were complaining to the Prophet about some diseases, he told them to drink from the uh, the milk of ibil or camels. And uh, the research today, uh, there's a lot of research here uh, in the U.S., there's research in Saudi Arabia that proves that camel milk has actually a lot of therapeutic benefits for multiple diseases like um, diabetes, blood pressure, and things like that. And if, uh, it has... Um, like it helps people with inflammatory problems and especially autism. Like there is research to go to National Institute of Health and other um, like magazines that are concerned with uh, autism. You'll find that there is a lot of benefits uh, for people who have autism from raw camel milk. So this is something that we should look into inshallah for its health benefits. And then Allah says, When they reflect and look at the sama, the heaven, how, or the sky has, how it has been lifted up. And this is also something that we need to reflect on, you know, at night, look at the skies. Who put the who put everything there? Who put these planets there? Who made the planets go in certain orbit? Who made the, the, the law of gravity the, the, so that these planets do not, you know, uh, if you think of subhanAllah, they have those people who monitor the traffic, the airplane traffic, and make sure that airplanes do not, you know, collide with, with each other. So, and, and there are billions and billions of stars, right? And they are all orbiting, and none of them collides with each other. So think of who put them in that place, who made them run in this orbit, who made all of this available for them. And this is Allah subhanahu and then he says, And would you not reflect about the mountains, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed them in their place? And one of the scientific miracles of the Quran, this is observable. It's not even like, uh, it's something that is observable that we can see with our own eyes. Um, that mountains, the, the, the part that we see from the mountain, like if you see an iceberg, an iceberg, if you see a picture of an iceberg, you see that the bottom part that is hidden to us, like the part that's under the ocean, is much larger than the part that we actually can see. And this is the same for mountains outside as well, uh, on land, I mean. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he described the mountains, he described them as the stake that you use for the tent, 
right? So usually that part, that little part from the stake is outside on the on top of the ground, but the rest of it is underground. And it's Allah's description. And another verse is the talk about mountains. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that these mountains, Allah placed them on earth to stabilize the earth so that it does not shake with us. And there's research that has been done in a university in Holland that proves that actually mountains reduce earthquakes. And another thing that we need to reflect on is the fact that imagine if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is connected to the next verse, وَإِلَى الْأَرْضِ كَيْفَ السُلْطِحَةِ So these two verses are kind of connected to each other. So think about if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the earth, the entire earth full of mountains, right? Imagine how difficult it was going to be for us to go from one place to another. We'd be climbing mountains day and night in order to go get groceries, to get something. It will, our life was going to be very difficult. Or imagine if earth itself, so in this verse Allah says, كيف السلطحة, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala flattened the earth for us. Imagine if the roads were like always like bumpy like that, how our cars were going to drive on them and how difficult everything was going to be, transportation and everything. So these are blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we do not really think about. And then Allah says, فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرْ So remind them of these, you know, amazing signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because your job is only to remind. It's not up to us to guide people. Some, some of us don't want to invite people to Islam, don't want to give advice because we tried and nobody's responding. But that's not our job. Guidance is not our job. Our job is to remind people and guidance is in the hearts, is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah says, Lasta alayhim bil You have no authority over them. Illa man tawalla wa kafar. Illa here, uh, in Arabic, it's supposed to be an istithna. But in here, it means but. It does not mean except. It means, but we all know, la ilaha illallah. There's no God except Allah. But here, it's munqata meaning it means but, it does not mean except. So but, or as for those who turn away and disbelieve in Allah, فَيُعَذِّبُهُ اللَّهُ الْعَذَابَ الْأَكْبَرُ Allah will punish them, the greatest punishment. إِنَّ إِلَيْنَا إِيَابَهُمْ To us or to Allah, they shall return. ثُمَّ إِنَّ عَلَيْنَا حِسَابَهُمْ And Allah will be their judge. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and keep us on the straight path and give us the ability to reflect on the amazing creation of Allah. قول قولي هذا واستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم فاستغفروه والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله